Let's bring in Mike Wilson, Morgan Stanley's chief U.S. strategist and chief investment officer for his thoughts on what is to come. Mike, it's always great to get your thoughts. Um, you made that call prior to there being any sort of war on continental Europe. And so do you think, I mean, you haven't put out a note yet, but do you think that the risk is really to the downside of even your target? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me, Melissa. Yeah, I mean, look, I think, uh, as you said, I mean, we were already, we came into this year not that optimistic because obviously the Fed was going to have to tighten um, due to the inflationary spike. And of course, uh, growth is slowing, as you as you described. And, you know, this the Russia's invasion of Ukraine only makes those two conditions worse, right? Because you now have more inflation, so they can't really back off. I mean, I would say, you know, one thing about geopolitical events like this, I mean, normally, you, know, you want to rush in and maybe buy these events. But at this time, I think it's different because central banks are kind of hamstrung, right? They Normally, they would flood the system with liquidity. They can't do that this time. And it's also going to have a negative impact on growth. So, yeah, I think it's a much easier kind of thing to say now that we're going to trade sub 4,000. It was more difficult back in January to make that call. But I think now it's kind of a fate, of a, fate accompli. And look, you all are saying it on the show. I mean, you're market veterans. You, you see what's going on under the surface, whether it's high yield, the breadth of the market, you know, what the leadership has been. It's been very defensive. So the market's screaming at us. And we just, we're not complete yet. We're, you know, Dan said it right. We're, the market's priced incorrectly at 19 times. You know, we've had an 18 multiple. That was why we were more bearish than most. And I, I would suggest we probably overshoot that sometime this spring. What is the risk, the biggest risk to the markets right now, Mike? What do you think is going to be the number one driver to the downside to your target? Well, clearly, I mean, this, you know, situation in Russia, Ukraine is front and center. I mean, nobody knows which way this is going to go. We're all hoping that it calms down. Um, I have no insight whether that's going to be the case. I'm hoping I'm praying for that. Um, so hopefully that fades. And then I think the market will focus on what it always focuses on, which is earnings in the U.S., right? Because, look, the U.S. market is somewhat distanced from this situation geographically and financially. Um, there's going to be ramifications um, indirectly. However, you know, I, I think earnings are going to slow anyways. I mean, that's that's been our call. So whether this situation calms down or not, we still have to face, I think, negative earnings revisions across a lot of sectors, particularly consumer, maybe some of the financial system now, given what's going on in in uh, in Europe, and of course, technology, which there's just going to be payback and demand. That's, that's starting to play out. It's been playing out. It was playing out before uh, this invasion. You know, in your notes, Mike, you put boring is beautiful, and there's nothing more boring than railroads, although I happen to love them, by the way. I was a kid. I used to love the model railroad. That's neither here nor there. You look at some of these names. I mean, Union Pacific, last I look, is making an all-time high. Reasonable valuation and companies that are far more efficient energy-wise than some of these trucking names. I'm not looking to play stock market here, but does that make sense, the railroads in this environment? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and look, it, I mean, we call this year the year of the stock picker. And I think I mean, that's what you got to do. You got to find businesses you think are somewhat protected um, from the issues that we're facing who have either pricing power or you know, they don't have issues that other companies are facing. And, and that may be one example. Um, you know, I'm not I don't have any railroad names off the top of my head that I love, but it makes but structurally that makes sense to me. And then, look, this this environment is changing. Right. I mean, obviously, defense stocks, maybe security stocks. Um, I think oil services, which is going to maybe enter a structural bullish period because we underinvested. I mean, there are things that are happening that, from this unfortunate incident, which is going to help some companies. That's what you got to do. You got you to bob and weave here a little bit and find the new opportunities and not rest back. It's going to be the same old type of market because it's not. Mike, great to get your thoughts. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Mike Wilson, Morgan Stanley. Karen, as you look across your portfolio, are there stocks that you're concerned about in terms of uh, European exposure risk in terms of dollar risk. I mean, you know, Meta, for one, I know that's in your portfolio, but that's got a pretty sizable chunk of its mm -hmm. revenues coming out of Europe. It does, although Meta, you know, I talk about great balance sheets and uh, valuations, and I just think the valuation on Meta, even if you were to discount it, is so far below the market, and yet, you know, I don't think that it should be. So that's not one that I'm overly worried about versus something like a Citibank, which... You know, I um, I have some leaps there, so that's sort of an embedded put in that you can't go below this the strike. But uh, that's that's one that I'm worried about because of that contagion and because of credit contagion, but also just the, the structure of a bank, right, is inherently levered. That's that's the way they they make money. So that would probably be my number one worry. Yeah, Tim. 
Materials tend to have more exposure to Europe than other mm -hmm. sectors, or it's certainly one of the leaders. But I, I just think, you know, you've seen a bit of a pullback in a handful of material stocks over the last couple of days just because of the parabolic move in their charts or the underlying commodity that's their primary. And, and I think this is weakness to buy. Uh, again, these are a lot of companies that have figured out how to generate free cash flow. These are a lot of companies that I don't think you're going to see uh, a major pullback in copper prices. I think you, you, you can see a quicker response on ag, especially when you free up uh, a little bit more of the global transportation dynamic here. But I do think you have a case where materials still look interesting. I think defense stocks look very interesting. I think you've got a case where uh, the pullback in the banks is something that I'm not ready to buy, even though I still think banks being priced for major credit crises are, are being overdone. They're pricing in Main Street, and today was another one of those days. It, it was, you know, again, it could have been a day where banks would have rallied on a higher rate dynamic, and they were telling you a different story.